it's Miss Brandy again. Welcome to the month of June. This is your June art kit video. This is going to be the last one with, that we do this school year and that makes me a little sad, but I hope to see you again next year and I hope that you've had a ton of fun all throughout this school year with me. All right, so I'm outside today. Yes, I'm at one of my favorite little spots here at the farm where I work. Um, we've got our beautiful garden behind us. Yeah, these pink flowers right back here, those are called echinacea or purple coneflower. And then these great big yellow ones up here, those are Mexican sombreros. Aren't they gorgeous? I just love it over here. It gives me so much peace. I hear the birds chirping. Every now and then I might see a little kitty cat walking by. <laughs> All right, so are you ready to open up your box for your June art kit? All right, let's do it. You're also going to hear some cars whizzing by because there is a road out here, but you know what? That's okay. All right, first of all, you're going to have a paint palette. This has six little holes or bowls in it that, put, that you can put paint in, okay? And you'll also have a paintbrush. You might have a different uh, colored handle than mine, but it's a nice big fat paintbrush. You're also going to have three q-tips an apron now we are going to be working with acrylic paints this month um, and those do not come out of clothes or tablecloths or anything like that so you'll need to be sure to put your apron on anytime you're working with your paint all right then you're going to have two bubble wands mine are clear right now because i'm going to show you how i made yours colorful that's all right you should have two different colors in yours and i'll show you how you can make that it's very easy you can do it at home you're also going to have a small rectangular canvas panel this is hard it's a canvas panel then you're also going to have a black rectangle this is card stock paper you can tell it's a little bit heavier than regular paper and then you're going to have a big white rectangle this is watercolor paper you notice it's even thicker than the black paper this paper is designed to get wet with watercolor paints and then dry without getting all wrinkly all right so that's very cool stuff we've worked with it before i love watercolor and then you'll also have your special treat i got y'all fun dip because it's like summertime already and we have lots of fun in the summer don't we and that's miss brandy's favorite word fun 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 so i got you fun dip i hope you enjoy but be sure to ask a grown-up if you can have this before you open it okay and then you'll also have a paint set now mine is bigger than yours this is my personal paint set i have a lot of colors okay you have a smaller one but it still has lots of really fun bright colors in it and it should be perfect for what we're going to do with your art kits okay all right you will also need a little bit of water in a cup or a bowl to rinse your paintbrush out in and then you'll also need some paper towels or napkins to wipe your hands because we're going to be using our fingers and we want to wipe the paint off each time so be sure to have several paper towels or napkins handy okay all right are you ready to get started on our very first project in june me too let's get started all righty for our first project you're going to need your paint set your paint brush and your canvas that's the hard one and a cup of water and some paper towels all right, now I've just got my canvas set up on my box, um, so that way I don't get any paint on my tablecloth. All right, so before you start painting, what I want you to do is find a pen or a marker and write your name on the back of it. That's gonna be the side that's smooth. That way you know um, which one is yours uh, without having to turn it over and uh, mess up the wet paint. Now, if you're doing it at home by yourself, you don't have to worry about this step, but if you're doing it in the classroom, then go ahead and write your name on it now. So I'm gonna write my name. If it'll work. Well, let's try the other side. How about that? My name is Brandy, so B-R-A-N-D-I. 
If you know how to spell your name, you spell your name right on there, just like that, okay? And then we're gonna turn it back over. All right, now have you put your apron on yet? Because you're gonna need to put your apron on. Go ahead and do that if you haven't done that already. All right, now in your paint set, the first color that you're gonna grab is going to be white. Now you're probably saying, Miss Brandy, the canvas is already white. Why would I want white paint? Well, I will show you in just a moment. So once you get your paint out, you're going to twist off the cap. Now you'll see that it is sealed right there. How do you get the paint out? Well, on the top of the cap, there's a little pointy thing. You're going to put that on there and give it a press down. Don't squeeze the tube though, because the paint will come shooting out. All right, so now you see that has opened it up. So what I'm gonna do is squeeze a little bit of this paint onto my canvas. Not the whole tube, you don't need that much, but I am going to put a good bit on there. You may have to come back and put some more on it in a minute. And then I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm going to use this to coat this entire canvas with this white paint. Now I'm gonna work quickly because I don't want the paint to dry. I want it to stay wet. All right, so I'm just gonna go back and forth. See, just like that. Now I am gonna need a little bit more, so I'm gonna use a little bit more. Put some in the corner right there, right there, right there. That ought to be good. Now this acrylic paint is called heavy body paint. It's thicker or heavier than your normal acrylic paint. And what that allows is for the paint to have a lot of texture when it's dry. It's not flat, it's got ridges and bumps. It gives it texture. Texture can be a beautiful thing in art because it makes your painting stand out from the page. It gives it a little bit more life. All right. And you know what? Even though I've got my whole canvas covered, I'm gonna add a little bit more just cause I want a thick layer of that paint. Now, when you're using a paintbrush, don't press straight down like that to where the bristles go all over the place. You wanna use the side of your brush. Go side to side, just like that. All right, now, I'm going to rinse my brush out because we don't want that to dry on there. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to use our brush again. So just give it a good little swirl in your water. You can put that to the side now because you're not gonna need your paintbrush anymore for this project. Okay, so I'm gonna try to pick this up without getting too much paint on my hands. So if you can see that, I've got the whole thing covered in a very nice thick layer of that white paint. I'm gonna wipe that off. That's what your napkins are coming in handy for. All right. Now, you can choose whatever colors you want for the rest of this project. You don't have to do the same colors that I choose. You may not even have the same colors that I have. I'm gonna go ahead and take mine out here. Okay. But I am gonna try to use the colors of the rainbow a little. So what would that be? Red, orange, yellow, yeah, green, blue, indigo, and violet, okay? So first I'm going to get my red. Now I've got some darker reds and some lighter reds. I'm just gonna go with the classic red here. And we're gonna do the same thing for each one of these that we did with the white. We're gonna open it up. Okay, whoop, you see that already wants to spill out because I was squeezing the tube a little bit. And I'm gonna place a nice thick dollop of red right on the corner, all right? But then I'm also going to come down here on this bottom one and do another one. All right, and then I'm gonna put my lid back on it. Be sure to put the lids back on it. You don't want it to make a mess or dry up. Okay, so I've got some red in this corner and some red in that corner, all right? You see it's longer here than it is here. I'm doing it on the short end, just like that. 
So what's next in the rainbow? We've got orange. So I'm going to take my orange. I'm going to open it up. Whoa! And then right next to those red dots, right up here at the top, we're going to put one right there. And then I'm going to come right here and put another one. Okay, so not down here, but on the side. Man, that made a mess. So all you have to do is take your paper towel and wipe that up. All right. You might need several paper towels for this project. It's going to be a little messy, but that's fun. All right. Next is going to be yellow. Now, remember, you do these however you want. You don't have to go in the color order that I'm doing. And I'm actually going to use this darker yellow. You see I have lighter yellows and darker yellows. I think I'm going to go for this darker one. Very gently press it. All right. And then again, just put it right next to that orange on both sides. That was a big old truck passing by. All right. What's after yellow? Green. Yes. So I've got my green. Open it up. All right. That one didn't come shooting out. Put some of that next to the yellow. After green is blue. And I think I'm going to go for a brighter blue. And then next to that, a darker blue for my indigo. So I've got a bright blue there. Silly me, I've got to open it first. All right. Dollop there and a dollop there. Put my lid back on. All right. And now I've got my darker blue. We do want to work a little bit fast. We don't want that white paint to dry up too much. Want it to still be a little bit wet. And then I'm going to do my violet. Perfectly right there. Now you'll see you have some extra space down here, but all of this is filled up. That's just fine. So what I'm going to do is add in a magenta or a pink type color because that's what would come next to violet and then I think for fun I'll put this lighter pink that I have it might be a little bit different in your kit but that's okay you use what you got she fly and then lastly, I have one more little spot right here. I think I'll do red again to bring it from one end of the rainbow back around to the other end of the rainbow. All right. So now that you've got all of your spots of paint on there, you can see I've piled it up pretty thick. This is where the fun and messy part comes in. Be sure to have your paper towels handy, okay? So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at this purple one right here, okay? Wait, yes, I'm gonna start at the purple. And what I'm gonna do is press down with my finger and swipe across, you see? You might have to swipe it more than once. And look at that. Do you see how it blends with the white paint? It gives it this really cool look. All right. Then I'm going to come to this other side over here where this red, the last red that I put down, and I'm going to do the same thing but go in this direction. Okay. Just like that. And then I'm going to wipe my finger. And then I'm going to come down to this blue one. 
and I'm going to do the same thing. And I want you to go across, across that red paint right there. Don't be afraid to blend them. Just be sure to wipe your finger each time. Now come up here to the top with this pink right here and do the same thing. Drag it down. Isn't that cool looking? I'm going to go with my brighter blue. Swipe it over. My magenta. Swipe it down. <laughs> They're all starting to mix on my napkin. Isn't that fun? Now my green. Swipe it over. Then my purple. Swipe down. Yellow. Swipe over. Blue. Swipe down. Orange, swipe over. Blue, swipe down. I'm going to have to get a new napkin. <laughs> get new napkins. All right. So I went down on that one. So here's my last one to go across. Whee. All right. So you see, I still have some up here. So I'm just going to drag those down this way. And then go down. Down. And down. Now you can come in here with your finger and kind of move that paint around a little bit. And go upwards. Try to cover up that area up there at the top. Voila! Ta-da! Now, look how cool of a piece of art you just made. And when it dries, all of this thicker paint is gonna stay raised up and give your painting texture. That's a beautiful thing about working with really thick paints. But see, you've got this cool little step effect, and then over here you've got this beautiful blending of colors. Isn't that so neat? It's kind of an abstract work of art. All righty. Now just be sure to wash your hands really good. Make sure that you don't have anything on your clothes, okay? And then... Um, set this in a place where it can dry completely because it's so thick it's going to take a little while to dry all the way um but it should probably be done in a day or two all righty good job okay for your next one you are going to need your black piece of paper your three q-tips your um, paint palette and your paint set. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, and again, I'm gonna put my paper on top of my box to keep the paint from getting on my tablecloth, but I'm gonna set that aside for now and just focus on my paint palette and my paints. All right, so we're gonna make a beautiful garden, okay? So what's the most common color you see in a garden? green all the leaves and grass it's a lot of green isn't it okay so i'm going to choose a green now i'm going to choose this very bright green because i want that bright color to show up on this black paper if you choose a color that's too dark it might not show up so well if you do not have green paint that's okay you can use any color you want in the end um, it's going to look really cool either way so what I'm going to do is squeeze a little bit of my green paint into one of my circles on my paint palette. And then I'm going to put the cap back on. All right. Then you can choose any colors you want for flowers. All right. I'm definitely going to use a yellow. I'm going to use this very bright yellow. I haven't opened it yet, so I'm going to open it. I'm going to squeeze a little bit in there. 
I love bright yellow sunny flowers. They just make you so happy when you look at them. And then I'm also going to choose my magenta color or it's a very dark pink light purple color. Very pretty. You find it a lot in flowers. Okay. You don't need a whole lot of paint for this. You only need only need a little bit and you probably don't even need that much, but we'll put it in there. All right, and then I think I'll also choose a beautiful orange color. Well, <laughs> what does Miss Brandy want to choose? No, I think I'm going to go for this deep dark blue. Now remember, you choose whatever colors you want. This is your garden. You make them how you want. All right. And for fun, I think I will choose, yeah, you know what? I am going to do orange. I think I will use it. Why not? Okay. So you can use six colors for this picture or three colors or five colors like I have here. It's however you want to do it. It's your little garden. Okay. I'm going to set that right there. And then I'm going to bring in my black paper. I'm going to set it right here in front of me. I have the long edge sitting towards me. Okay. All right. So the best way to start off doing a flower this way is to actually draw the stem first. Okay. So I'm going to take one of my Q-tips and I'm going to dip one of the ends in the green. All right. I'm going to dip it in there get a good bit on there. Okay. I'm going to start at the bottom of my page. I'm going to put the Q-tip down and then I'm just going to swipe up. Now you might have to do it several times and that's okay. You might have to dip and swipe, dip and swipe. There we go. You see, sometimes it doesn't want to show up. You're going to see some black paper underneath that. That's okay. You can also start at the top and work your way down. But when you start at the bottom and then swipe up while you're lifting up, it creates this nice tapered stem. Lift up. You don't want to go all the way to the top of your page, just a little ways. And you don't want to make them the same length either. Make some short and some long. You can make some of them wider and some of them skinnier. However you want to do it, but you're creating stems for your flowers. I think I'm going to make this one a little bit wider, but bring it to a narrow point at the top. See, Q-tips can be used like paintbrushes, huh? It's a great little tool to have on hand. When you don't have a paintbrush, you can always use your fingers, a Q-tip. Almost anything you can find at the end of a pen or a pencil. You see I'm going in and I'm just making them all different lengths. Some are short, some are long. And then I'm also going to curve this one over, you see? Just for fun. Because not all plants go straight up and down, do they? Some kind of curve, bend to the side. All right, so you're just gonna keep on working that green paint up and make as many of these little stems as you want. Now, as this paint dries, you can go back over it with some more paint and make it a little bit darker. Kind of layer up that paint. Just 
just like that. Just remember to lift up at the end, get that nice tapered stem look. Honk, honk. Somebody's honking. Okay, so now we've got this grassy looking lines on our page. Big truck coming through. <laughs> All right, so since I'm not using my green paint anymore, I'm just going to set that to the side in that green paint right there. And I'm going to grab a new Q tip. And this time I'm going to do my yellow. All right, I'm gonna dip it in there just like that. Now you can create lots of different flower shapes using different techniques. You can use dots, lines, swirls, however you wanna do it. But this is, I'm gonna show you um, what I'm gonna do. So on my taller stem right here, I'm gonna create some of those Mexican sombreros that were behind me in the beginning of this uh, video. And so I'm going to put my Q-tip towards the center, right, just at the top of this long stem. I'm gonna set it down and I'm just gonna go whoop. And I'm gonna create just a short little line and then I'm gonna come up here and do the same thing. And I'm just gonna keep going around just like that. And I can drag these a little further down. Make my petals bigger. Do you see how it creates a flower shape? You see that? Awesome. All right, and down here, I think I'm gonna, I put my hand right in my wet paint. That's okay, that's why we have napkins. And then I'm gonna come over here and create one more. This time, I think I'm gonna angle all of them down like this. It's going to go down. I'm not going to go any up. All right. Just like that. Okay. Very cool. Now I'm going to flip this over. I didn't do this with my green one, but I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to use this clean side. So be very careful not to touch that wet paint. You could even take your napkin and kind of wipe that off a little bit. All right. That way, if you want to use your yellow again, you can use that yellow end, but you also have an end right here. All right. Now I'm going to take my magenta and instead of making lines this time, I'm going to make dots and I'm going to come just to the side of a stem and I'm going to create a dot. And then over here, create another dot. Now I'm going to dip my paint several times while I'm creating my dots. And so I'm just going on each side of this stem right here and placing these dots just like this. Now when I get to the top of the stem, I'm going to create this kind of half circle shape with a couple more dots. Kind of bring them around and connect them to each other. So now I have that. That looks a lot like a flower called a hyacinth. Hyacinth, isn't that a name? And you could also go in here and place a few more dots right in the middle, you see? And you can bring it down as far down the stem as you wanna go, but I would leave a little bit of stem like that. All right, so now that I've used both ends of that Q-tip, I'm just gonna set it down in a paint like that. And now I'm gonna grab a new Q-tip. And this time I think I'm gonna use my blue. All right, and I think I'll come over here and I'm gonna place one dot right above a stem. And then I'm gonna start coming around and placing more dots in a circle around the stem. You see that? All right, 
And then I'm going to do one more just outside of that. Just keep making a big old circle. All right. You see what we got going on there? All right, and I think I'm gonna create one more of those right here. I'm just going around and pressing my Q-tip straight down on the paper. Now, if you start doing this and you think you've messed up, you probably haven't. But if you feel like you did or you don't like it, guess what? Just wait for this paint to dry and then you can turn it over and try again on the other side. But that's what we have going so far. Doesn't that look so neat? Now over here, the paint wasn't very thick and it's already starting to dry and I can tell that I can barely see it on this black paper. So I'm gonna come back in and put thicker spots of paint on top of the ones that I've already done. I really want that to show up when it's dry. And if it's too thin, it'll just, um, when it dries, it'll just be taken over by the black paper in the background. That's the tricky thing working with black paper, but in the end, it looks so cool that black can really make that colorful paint pop. Once you see that all of your paint has dried, if you want to come back in and uh, go over it with the same colors again, you can do that. All right, I really like the way that that looks. So now that I'm done with my blue, again, I'm going to wipe it off so I don't get too much wet paint on me. And I'm gonna use the other end for orange. Yup. Then let's see, what do we wanna do now? What's some cool techniques that we can use? Hmm? Yeah, let's see. I think that I will make a swirl. You do this however you want. And it's okay to drag it through some of the paint that's already still wet that you've done. That's just gonna make it really interesting. So what I'm doing is I'm starting in the middle and I'm making a circle but going bigger as I go. All right. Right. Let's see. So that's what I'm doing. How are you doing yours? <laughs> All right. I think I want to create one more of these purple ones over here. So you just get to play with this and make your own little garden however you want it. That's what makes it so fun. And kind of come off the page a little bit. That makes it very interesting. Come up above the stem, way above it. That also makes it interesting. Here we go. And now that some of my yellow paint has dried, I'm gonna go back over what I did with a new coat of yellow paint. Very thick, because yellow is a very light color. So we want it to show up. Very cool. It's looking like the garden behind me already. See? 
when you go back over it with another layer of paint, it really helps that color to stand out. You could even go in front of this orange again. Make it look like this yellow flower is sitting in front of the orange one. Ta-da! All right, doesn't that look cool? That looks so neat. All right, you know what? I have one more spot um, in my paint palette that doesn't have paint, and I think I want to add a little bit of white to this. I think white would really pop. I still have one end of a Q-tip that hasn't been used. I'm going to get my green off of there and wipe it off. And then I'm going to dip it in the white. And let's see down here, I think I'm just going to add some more little bitty dots. Just kind of all over the place. I'm gonna add big ones and little ones, but I'm just gonna keep in mind that once this dries, it might not show up very well, so I'll just have to go back over it again. All right, very cool, I love that. All right, so you just keep working at yours, okay? You could also do this on white paper or blue paper, whatever color paper you want, but it's just the overall technique of using those Q-tips creating your lines and then going in and using your other q-tips to create all these different shapes around the stems to make it look like a garden all right i love that okay good job all right for our last project you are going to need your watercolor paper that's that big white rectangle and you're also going to need your two bubble wands now remember i said mine is clear because i'm going to show you how i made yours colorful all right so i'm going to set my paper off to the side for now and i've got food coloring that's what this is food coloring you use it to color icing and cakes and Easter eggs and all kinds of stuff. You can find it at the grocery store. Uh, really easy to find. Okay. And I'm going to pick two colors for, for right now. I'm going to choose blue and hmm, green. I'm going to choose blue and green for now. All right. So I'm going to set those to the side. So all I did was open up my food, whoa, open up one of the food colorings. I'm just going to take the lid off. And then all I did was open this up and set the wand to the side and be careful not to spill this. And I just put two drops, I just put two drops of that food coloring in, put the lid back in, and then gave it a good shake. All right, now you see it's already colored. All right, now I'm gonna make a green one. Carefully open it up, set it to the side. Two drops, one, two. Put the lid back on and give it a shake. And now you've got green. Now you could also mix colors if you wanted to with food coloring if you're gonna do this at home. You can use this with any bubble mix or you can create your own bubble mix with water and some dish soap or laundry detergent even. You can make all you need is some type of soap and water. Just be sure to ask a grown up if it's okay if you do it beforehand. So now I've got my green and my blue and you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and make red and yellow too, just for fun. Why not? I've got them here. I've got some extra bubble wands. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. First, I'm gonna do my red, I think. One, 
two. Give it a good shake. All right, now I've got my red. Put the lid back on. Now my yellow. One, two. Close it up and give it a shake. Easy as that. Now you've got colored bubbles. Now just remember that when you go to blow these bubbles, when they pop on something, it's going to leave color behind. So that's another reason why I'm outside today because I didn't want colorful bubbles floating around the studio. So this is a great outdoor project. All right, so I'm just going to take my piece of paper and set it right here on my box. Now, I don't mind if it gets on this tablecloth because it's got paint and stuff on it already, so I don't mind, but be sure to put newspaper down on your table or a plastic tablecloth, something that you don't mind getting the uh, colorful bubbles on, all right? Now, I'm gonna start with my yellow. So you're gonna do this just like how you blow bubbles any other time. You take your wand out, you see you got your bubble on there, now the trick is to get real close to the paper and blow kind of slow, but fast enough to make the bubbles come out. It's kind of tricky, so just take your time figuring it out. So you're just gonna... <laughs> and if it's windy outside, they may carry them away. Whew. And they also may bounce back onto your face. <laughs> Another technique you can use is to pick up the paper and hold it right in front of your face and blow. Aha, now that might not show up too well on the camera because it's such a light color, yellow is. But when we do the darker colors, you'll definitely be able to see it. So you're just gonna keep blowing bubbles on this paper and letting them pop on the paper and leave these circles and splashes behind. You can do it as much as you want. Keep on blowing those bubbles. I love bubbles. See, that's a good one right there. Just get kind of close to the paper and blow real slow. Just like that. And then you can turn your paper and do it on the other side. Awesome. So now you can see that we've got this really cool effect going on. So now I'm gonna switch it over to green. You use whatever colors you want. If you're doing this at school or with a friend that also has an art kit, y'all can trade out colors or you can create your own. Sometimes they pop right away and leave these little speckled marks and then sometimes they make a bubble and pop on the paper and create this really cool circle. Very cool. You see, there we go. There's a bubble that hasn't popped yet, but when it pops, poof, it's going to leave this cool circle behind. It's a bubble shape. Bubbles just scream summertime to me. I love blowing lots of bubbles with my kids in the summertime. There we go. That one doesn't want to pop. Pop. There we go. We're creating art with bubbles. Can you believe it? I love this. Just keep blowing. <laughs> 
Some of them are going to float off, too. All right, so I've got some green ones on there. So that's what we're looking like now. Now I'm going to get my blue, not my food color, but my bubbles. I'm going to get my blue. We do those. Whoa. See, that one popped on the wand and it left this really cool splatter effect. That's very cool. You're just going to want to blow real gentle on it. And then turn your paper. I think I'm going to try that technique where I picked up my paper and held it up to my face again. There we go. I like that. You just have to be really careful not to knock your bubbles over. Oh no, I'm about to do that. How about I hang on to my bubbles while I do it? Very cool. See, we're getting some blue circles and splatters on there too. I'm sure I have dots all over me. I sure do. All right. You see that? Look at this cool artwork that you're making. It's going to take some practice and you are going to get some food coloring on you, but it will come off. I promise. All right. Now I'm going to do my red. There is a dog barking back there. And the red shows up as pink on this paper. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that so cool? I turn my page. I think I'm going to get a couple more on here and then I will call it done. Sometimes in art you have to know when it's done. You can keep on going and going and going or you can stop it at just the right point. Nice circle there. All right. All right, maybe one more, maybe one more. Here, I'm going to turn it a little bit. All right. There we go. And I got a bubble right there. I'm going to pop. Okay. Now, look at that interesting bubble art. Doesn't that look so cool? Now, you can just keep going and going and layering all of these colors on top of one another. If you did yellow first, you can go back and do yellow. Just however you want to do it. But I'm going to call mine finished now. All right. Did you have fun doing that? I bet you're just covered in speckled colors <laughs> like a little Easter egg. All righty. Good job. All righty. See, wasn't that fun? You've learned all kinds of cool techniques to do with paint and bubbles even. Yeah. Remember, we first we created our abstract rainbow piece of art with our acrylic paint. That was messy, but fun, huh? And then we created our garden here and then our bubble art. All right, so you've learned how to make all kinds of cool lines and circles and dots using all kinds of techniques and types of paper and tools and I hope that you've picked up a love for art all throughout this school year and I hope you have a great summer 
if you're not going back into preschool next year and you're moving on to kindergarten, I hope that you have a wonderful time. Always remember, be kind to one another. Be kind to yourself, okay? Friendships are built on love and understanding and art can make us understand one another. We tell our own stories through our art. So hopefully some of the things that you learned this year, you can use to create your own art and tell your own story and pass that along to the people around you. All right. Okay. Have a happy and safe summer. Bye.